I'd met Luca before. Um, we met for some other reason. I don't remember what it was for, but we hit it off. Well, because I admired you and I wanted to meet you, and you said, oh. okay. Thank you. Uh, so, so we'd spoken before, and then this, this script came across my agent's desk, and, and I, I got it, and then I read it, and I was like, whoa. Uh, I think I need to have a serious conversation with Luca about this. And I voiced my concerns. You know, it, it, you know I mean... He wanted to pass. I did want to pass. I did want to pass. It, just, it scared me. Uh, I thought that this was going to require so much and push me so far. It just made me nervous, you know. But then, after having a series of great conversations with Luca, I came to the conclusion that because this m made me feel, because it challenged me, it's the reason I have to take it. And I'm, I'm glad you talked me into it. Was there a specific thing that scared you? Can you elaborate? It, there was just like such a high level of intimacy that I'd never really done on camera before. Uh, I also have two little kids and I, I just, you know, I was a little bit nervous about all the the nudity that was originally in the script, and uh, I just had images of my daughter being at school when she's like 13 years old, and like her friend, like people teasing her and like printing up pictures of my penis from the internet. Like I was just like, oh man. Uh. But um, it, it, I just, I was completely won over once I saw everything from a different perspective than my own. You know, I'd been searching for a project where I could have some sort of sexual experience with a fruit. And uh, and then this just seemed kind of like was perfect. This choice. There was two <laughs> yeah. others, but yeah. No. But no, the serious answer is, you know, these the opportunity to work with someone like Luca, the opportunity to work with someone like Army, and then James Ivory and Sofian Stevens to be acting over his music. These opportunities are few and far between for people my age. They really don't exist. And I, <laughs> I feel like I know that because I've been reading the things that do exist. So um, um, it just to wrestle with a role this complex, this meaty, to have a story that feels important and relevant, universally relatable, and, and maybe even has the capacity to help people realize things about themselves, um, then like, I, you have to seize on that. So uh, that was the thought process. All right, you brought up the peach, so I have to, uh, I have to ask you about this sure to be legendary peach sequence. What are the conversations you have around a sequence like that? What, how do you brace yourself. Well, I'm sure Luke is going to have something to add to this, but the first thing, the first like thank you of sorts goes to Luca because I remember so vividly that day that he wasn't treating it any differently than any, than any other scene we shot. And I guess as an actor, I guess as, a, as like a, it's like a young person's instinct too. You kind of look to the to whoever's guiding you and however they're feeling. And he, you know, he was just treating it like everything else. Luca had Practice, made sure it was something that was possible, and uh, and uh, hey, you've said that in other interviews. It's, it's fine. It's true. And um, and uh, not till the end. And I just couldn't. I I, I I love the book. It's fantastic. But that scene was really a contrivance for me because I couldn't believe. I could believe he's like Elio need to explore. But I technically didn't thought it was really working but until it was like I we came back to set work. and said, "Okay." And I went back to him and said, "I tried. It worked." <laughs> and he said, yeah, I tried too. <laughs> and, uh, and and then on the day, like I, it was just treated like everything else. It didn't feel like there was any uh, ceremony around it. So it just kind of came and went, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> and it was just you know they say experience is the greatest teacher. So we just we just spend a lot of time with one another. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like a lot of the very physically intimate and emotionally intimate scenes were kind of on the tail end of the shoot too, so then we had all that time shooting together too to kind of... Yeah, but we made the rehearsal at the very beginning and the intimacy was fantastic. First, first day, uh, we show up for rehearsals and we get to the villa where we shot almost the entire movie and it's, it's actually one villa and we shot on the grounds and property around there. Uh, and we get to this house and we're like, wow, look, this is all so new and so different and Luca goes, why don't we just do a quick rehearsal? And we're like, and we're like yeah, yeah, great, nice, sure, we'd nice. love to. Let's get into it. He goes, okay, let's just do, I don't know, scene 62. And we're like, okay, 62. And, it, and basically, there's nothing that happens in the scene other than Oliver and Elio kissing. <laughs> so he's like, let's go in the backyard. And we're like, okay. And he goes, why don't you just do it right here? And he points to a spot on the ground. And, and we're like, uh, just rehearse the scene. He's like, yeah, yeah, go, go, go. And we're like, all right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> let's break the ice. And then we just... Uh, he had Timmy and I make out on the ground and roll around for a bit, and then he was like, and "I left." He's like, "Let's try it again." 
Okay, that's good. Bye, guys. And then he left. And that was the end of our rehearsal on our first day. So just do this thing, get it over with immediately, and then you're there, right? Is that, was that your thinking? Uh, I don't know. I think it is about... Uh, really, for me, it's important that uh, th and there is no embarrassment when you shoot a film. It's something really ridiculous when there is embarrassment. I, I, it irritates me when I see like... Eh, because it's... it's uh, first of all, it's, it's, it's uh, acting. Uh, and second of all, uh, um, uh, I think it's, uh, there is no difference between uh, scenes, dialogue, sex, uh, action scene. It's just making, let's make it good. Yeah. I, I think that the, 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 I said May 68, and I can say that from May 68, the private is public and the public is private. I think the politics of desire of these two are as strong and powerful enough to sustain uh, any prosaic uh, uh, references to a timeline of events, which is not what a movie should necessarily be doing. Right. Yes, every movie has to echo in its time, right? Oh, is there a reason that you're particularly glad to be putting this out? I mean, I, I think that a movie like this is, is incredibly pressing and important whenever it comes out, because it does one of the beautiful functions that art is supposed to do, where someone's gonna watch this and it's gonna challenge them, it's gonna challenge their sensibilities, and they're gonna go, maybe love is love. Like maybe I'd never saw it from that perspective, but just watching two human beings develop such an intense and beautiful bond with each other, it's, it's, it's nice. That's what, that's what the amazing ride of this movie has been, and it was at Sunday and somebody in the Q&A raised their hand and they said, you know, I wish my father had spoken to me the way Michael speaks to you in that film. And I guess, I guess reading the book, I, I realized the weight that was there emotionally and certainly shooting it, but seeing the reaction now and the way people are talking about it, or even what you just said that, you know, in the States right now where we are struggling with a sort of crackdown on, on life, yeah, that, uh, that to make this kind of movie with the explicit thing I just mentioned, the lack of a, uh, a violent aggressor is, is maybe like a, maybe the strongest antidote uh, there could be, but um, I don't know, I'm yeah, anyway. Yeah, and I feel, honestly, I, I hope you take this the way I mean it, which is the right way, which is that I feel like this is a movie that we're waiting for you to make. Like, I, I think it, it showcases everything that is great about what you can do, and, and maybe it is, maybe you were waiting for that moment, that risk to come along that was the right risk to take. What do you think? Thank you. <laughs> Um, Bradley Sparks, Extra. Um, this is a question for uh, Army and Timothy. I'm just wondering for young people or people in general who are going through a uh, similar uh, period of exploration or questioning uh, that your characters are in the film, I wondered if there's a message you hope that they might take from the film. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that the entire for me anyway, the entire message of this film is so beautifully distilled and boiled down to its most elemental form in Michael's speech, where it's all about self-acceptance and it's all about self-realization and it's all about figuring yourself out and being okay with yourself. Because guess what? You can be okay with yourself no matter what. I just think that there's, there's such an important message in that, especially for me as a, a father of two kids, I can tell you that watching Michael deliver that speech forever changed the way I will deal with my children. You know, I mean, I think that there's such a beautiful message of acceptance and humanity there. Wow, I could not have said that better. And now I will fail as I try. No, um, I, that, that's exactly it. I, I, f I feel quite fortunate that I got to grow up in New York and that, uh, the 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 idea of uh, self exploration, you know, being contaminated or or not allowed altogether. Luckily, that wasn't a part of my growing up. And I have parents. I have a mom that saw this movie last night and freaked out for it. So, um, I guess what Army said, I would just encourage any sort of self acceptance and any sort of you just got to be kind to yourself. Uh, uh, yeah, I. Uh, and it's it's especially tough to say this, or you know, our, our millennial generation. It's it's saturated with judgment. I apologize to everybody in the room for my for my millennial generation. No, I'm kidding. Um, but um, yeah, yeah.
Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey you 